Hello everyone, myself Mrs. Suvarna Alakthati, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pharmacology at Nandanar Reddy Group of Institutions. So the subject we are dealing here is the human anatomy and physiology. In that today we are going to discuss about the tissues. Okay. So that what are the tissues? Tissues are the group of cells. Okay. The cells together, the same performing cells together, they form a tissues now. So uh, the cells already as we know that the cells are the uh, basic structural and functional units of our uh, body. So these cells which have got a similar structure and a similar function usually, same functional tissue uh, cells together they form a tissue. So now we will study the different types of tissues, classification of tissues. So the different types of tissues, the major four types of tissues are there in our body. Again these four types of tissues are subdivided into further classification. So the first one is connective tissue and the second one is epithelial tissue, third one is muscle tissue and then the nervous tissue. So we will discuss the uh, different classification of these four major tissues. So coming to the uh, subclassification of that epithelial tissue, it has got again the simple epithelium in which there is a squamous epithelium tissue, cuboidal epithelium tissue and the columnar epithelium tissue and also the fourth one is pseudo-satified uh, epithelial tissue and next one is stratified epithelial tissue. Uh, that is transitional, strati uh, transitional stratified squamous, non-keratinized, even the keratinized tissues are there and then the stratified squamous keratinized tissues are there, okay. So usually the first one it is a, a classification is based on the no, uh, size of the cell, uh, the shape of the cell it is uh, classified whereas this is classified on the layers of cells, how many layers of cells are present depending on that these two classifications are made and then the connective tissue. Connective tissue is mainly made up of different varieties of cells. It's a abundant tissue, it is connective tissue. So it is made up of many types of uh, cells like fibroblast, uh, fibrocytes, adipose tissue, uh, tissue uh, cells, which are also called as fat cells, plasma cells, mast cells, macrophages, leukocytes, pigment cells, mesenchymal cells, all these different different varieties of cells together they form the uh, connective tissues. Okay, even the collagen fibers, different fibers and cells together they form the connective tissues. So the different types of fibers, collagen fiber, elastic fiber, reticular fibers, all these fibers together and cells together they form a connective tissue. So the Classification of connective tissue is that there are major uh, subclassification in connective tissue that is one is the connective tissue proper and the second one is the supporting connective tissue and the third one is the fluid connective tissue. In again connective tissue proper there are again subdivision that is loose connective tissue and the dense connective tissue. In loose connective tissue you have areolar tissue, adipose tissue, reticular tissue whereas in dense connective tissue you have regular tissue, irregular tissue and then the elastic one. And then in supporting connective tissue, uh, you have cartilage and bones. Cartilage is again uh, subclassified as helen cartilage, fibrocartilage and elastic cartilage. Whereas uh, bone have got two types that is the compact bone and the spongy bone. And the third one, final one is the fluid connective uh, tissue in which uh, you will have the blood and the limbs. That is the connective, uh, about the connective tissue. So the third uh, classification that is about the muscular tissue. Muscular tissue, there are three types are there. One is the skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles. So these are the basic classification of these. And the nervous system, it is not that uh, the whole one only nervous tissue is there. In that the different systems comes actually. That is the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system. Okay. And then this is the connective tissue classification. Now, uh, after studying the different types of uh, uh, tissues, one by one we will discuss in this uh, particular topic. Today's we will discuss about the epithelial tissue. So the epithelial tissue is the uh, biggest, largest one in our body and then it is usually present in trachea, bronchi, the locations we will uh, discuss here. That is especially this uh, epithelial tissue is found covering the whole body. That is, it is almost present in the skin, it is present. So, it covers the whole body, epithelial tissue, and then it also lines the cavities and tubes in our body. And it is also uh, present in the linings of most of the organs like gastrointestinal, GIT, 
and then urinary tract blood vessels heart chamber uterus most of the organs inner lining and outer linings are made up of the epithelial tissue other than this even they are also present in glands also and then in some hollow cavities also they are present and when uh, uh, they are usually found exposed to the surface of the body because they are in the uh, present in the skin they are usually found exposed to the uh, outer surface and uh, they are also found in the glands Uh, then coming to the structure of the ep uh, epithelial tissue okay the epithelial tissue usually it is uh, very tightly packed cells it has that's why it is not having any extracellular uh, material that is uh, matrix that is called as extracellular matrix which is present in between the cells because here the cells are very closely packed or very tightly packed that's why there is, in epithelial tissue you find a very less or negligible uh, extra matrix extracellular matrix is absent or uh, negligibly present here and then they have got a Uh, on the top, they have got a, a free cells there. Okay, the free surface. This is a free surface which is exposed to the external environment within the body. External environment it is uh, 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 sub, uh, um, I mean exposed to. That is the epical or the on the top of the cell. The free cells are present, and then at the basal deep surface, they have got a basement membrane. This is the basement membrane, and then this is one more layer of cells. The, uh, which is present and then finally all these cells the basement membrane is finally connected to the uh, connective tissue this pink one is the connective tissue where they are uh, they continue the connection with the continue uh, connective tissue okay so uh, basically the nature of epithelial tissue is that they are uh, they don't uh, have any blood vessel they are not supplied with the blood vessel that's why how do they get the nutrients usually blood vessel supply the nutrients to all parts of our body so as the epithelial tissue do not have any blood vessels they get the nutrients from their open uh, uh, on top their open uh, free cells are there so those cells they uh, absorb the nutrients uh, here and then uh, even at the base point they are as they are attached with the connective tissue from the connective tissue blood vessels they absorb the nutrients that's how because they don't have the blood vessel they give get the nutri uh, nutrients from the top free layer cells and the bottom uh, cells will absorb the nutrients from the blood vessels that are passing through the connective tissue okay and the uh, second point important about the epithelial tissue is that they are highly innervated innervated in the sense they are they have got a rich supply of nerves and the third important thing is that they can reproduce okay because the these epithelial cells uh, cells are present in the gastrointestinal tract and the skin because this gastrointestinal tract and then the skin both usually undergo the damage process so the wear and tear process continues there that's the reason it's very necessary that the cells uh, earlier cells they die and the new cells form there so the uh, they these specially epithelial cells can reproduce and then uh coming to the functions of these epithelial cells the most important function of this is protection because uh, it is a skin skin the major function is the uh, protection okay so it covers the skin the whole body it gives the protection to the body and then um, because the skin also absorbs uv rays and uh, helps in the production of vitamin d also that is another function of that and then the another function is sensory function sensory function is that because uh, our sense organs like eyes nose ear and all those there also the epithelial tissue is present that's why through the sensory organs it helps in sensory functions also and the next one is it helps in secretions because it it is in the skin it secretes the sweat it you uh, helps in the secretion of hormones because it is present in the glands okay and and then it also helps in uh, producing the digestive juices like it is present in the gastrointestinal tract that's why it helps in the production of gastric acid that is the hydrochloric acid which is produced to help the uh, help in the digestion so it uh, all together it helps in the secretion of hormones sweat and then the digestive juice then finally the imp uh, another important function of epithelial tissue is the absorption it helps in the absorption of the nutrients from the food from the uh, gut it is in the intestinal tract so from the gut the nutrients is absorbed there and it also helps in the uh, caseous exchange because 
the epithelial tissue it is present in the lungs also so it helps in the gaseous exchange of the lungs there okay and then uh, because uh, through the sweat it removes the waste material also from the body so these are some of the functions of the epithelial tissue next we will study the classification how they are classified so the, as i told you before they are classified depending based on the cell shape and number of cells they possess okay the first one is based on the cell shape they are classified into squamous okay which is thin and flat and then cuboidal which is which have got a cube shaped uh, cells in them then the columnar which is more taller which have got a oval nucleus in them whereas in cuboidal you have a round shaped nucleus okay and then they are more tall because they, are, they look like a column and the fourth one is pseudo stratified which have got a verifying cells i mean verifying you know, forms of cells are there pseudo as the name itself indicates false okay pseudo means false stratified that is the uh, striated uh, striations you will see there as the striations won't be there so they look like striated so they are called as pseudo stratified so we will just study the location and the structure and then the function of these four cells okay so the squamous epithelium these cells are very thin flat and irregular cells and which they usually look like a floor only i mean one layer of floor as if the tiles are present on the floor so the uh, uh, mainly the nucleus is at the center there and then they are usually observed in the esophagus and lining of the mouth oral cavity they are present in and they are also present in the alveoli of the lungs and blood vessels okay that is the location of the squamous epithelium okay and the major function of these uh, uh, squamous epithelium is that it protects the underlying tissue uh, from the injuries or the germs so wherever this squamous epithelium is pre uh, present the main function what it does is that it uh, protects uh, uh, the underlying tissues from the injury or the germs okay and then other um, uh, function of this is that it helps in the exchange of the gases because it's if it is present in the lungs it helps in the exchange of gases and in blood it helps in the exchange of the materials from the cells and the blood that is the function of the squamous epithelium now coming to the cuboidal epithelium in cubo uh, this cuboidal epithelium they have got a, a cube shaped structure and one round nucleus is present in the uh, cuboidal epithelium and usually they are present in the kidney tubules and uh, duct of salivary glands okay at the, they are present in the kidney tubules and duct of salivary glands and the function of cuboidal epithelium is that it gives a mechanical support and it also uh, uh, mean uh, helps in the Uh, forms of uh, glands and it secretes the substances like hormones okay so they are called as glandular epithelium because they are present in the gland they secrete the uh, substances from those glands that's why sometimes they are called as glandular epithelium when they are present in the gland okay and the third one is columnar epithelium in columnar epithelium um, usually you look like a pillar that is the columns it looks like columns so the nucleus is usually present at the base here okay and then Uh, these usually are present in the intestinal lining and then they are also uh, so the uh, they move and push the mucus to clear uh, out the uh, mean uh, mean uh, usually the one which are present here they will have the cilia structures above the uh, on this cilia will be there which helps in the movement of the particles uh, on them okay so uh, they are also called a ciliated columnar epithelium those cilia which are present uh, like projections which are present on that so they help in the movement of thread like structures which they help in the movement of the substance they push the substances forward okay so that is and the main function of this columnar epithelium is that it helps in the absorption excretion and secretion of the food okay so uh, next coming uh, to, uh, the other point is the uh, important point in the epithelial tissue is that some cells in the uh, epithelial tissue possess the goblet cells okay these are the goblet cells in uh, which are uh, present especially in the respiratory tract you can say so the main function of goblet cells is that they secrete the mucus okay Uh, mucin or the they secrete the mucus in them okay and that is the goblet cells which are specially present in the respiratory uh, tract okay? where in the you uh, they produce the mucus and some cells they have the cilia these are the thread like straw projections which are on the top of the uh, tissue okay the cell uh, cilia they help uh, in the movement of the material or whatever the uh, i mean when you Uh, take any dust particles so these cilia they throw it back again or any germs or anyone so they uh, function is that they uh, they help in the movement of uh, out outwards so they remove the dust particles also 
so uh, that is what the cilia are present which are sensory which help in the sensory and the movement of the particles around them and then some of the tissues they even have the microvilli these are called as a microvilli uh, which is also called as a brush border means uh, it looks like a brush okay so the important thing is that these brush borders of the microvilli they increase the uh, F, uh, increase the area of that particular tissue by increasing the area they help in more of absorption of nutrients okay so the major thing what they do is they help in the uh, absorption of nutrients because they are increasing that area that is uh, all these uh, things what we study is the classification of tissues depending on the, um, the cells shape okay that is squamous then the cube like columnar and then pseudostratified now uh, depending on the cell layers how many layers of cells are there depending on that the another classification of epithelial tissue that is a simple epithelium stratified epithelium and pseudo epithelium uh, uh, pseudo stratified epithelium tissues are there okay so uh, so these are usually the most important thing is squamous uh, the first one is the simple epithelium tissue they have only one layer of cells okay so one layer of cells one layer of cells again it is simple epithelium simple squamous simple cuboidal the shape uh, cube like shape but one layer only so and again the column like shape which is a simple columnar but squamous a uh, simple squamous simple cuboidal and simple columnar all these three will have the single layer of cells okay that is more important and then comes the next one stratified epithelial uh, epithelium in which there will be two or more than two types of uh, or two layers of cells are there this one this one two layers or more than two layers of cells that's called as stratified epithelium only okay so usually here the only the basement membrane is in contact uh, I mean uh, these layer of cells only will be con in contact with the basement membrane whereas the above cells will not be in contact with the basement membrane usually so these uh, basement membrane uh, cells are so uh, closely tightly attached to each other they look like a brick and they give a firm structure to the body actually they help in giving the firm structure to the body and then uh, the, uh, that's what about the stratified epithelial tissue they usually consist of several layers of uh, cells and then um, the, the, they help in the usually what they happen is that uh, they Oh, the above layer of tissues, uh, two layers of tissues are there. One layer of cells usually um, uh, undergo wear and tear process and they die and the lower layer of cells, they move forward and this process continues. The above layer uh, undergoes a wear and tear damage process. They die, they shed off and then the lower layer, ca layer comes to the upper layer and one more layer rep uh, is reproduced at the basal membrane. Okay. And then now the basement membrane uh, that is uh, uh, the main function of this is the, that they protect the underlying structure and uh, they help uh, uh, come uh, out of the wear and tear process. Okay, that is about the stratified epithelium. Now we will study about uh, some uh, this uh, stratified epithelium again like uh, how you studied in simple epithelium that is squamous, cuboidal, columnar and then uh, pseudo. L uh, like that only even in stratified where is the multi-layered cells are there even in this photo stratified squamous is there, st stratified cuboidal is there and stratified columnar is there and uh, pseudo stratified as I mentioned earlier pseudo means it is a false. It looks like striated muscles are there. There won't be any striations so the stratified position will be there that is a pseudo stratified um, uh, tissues are there okay and then uh, this uh, the other one is in uh, transitional epithelium one more type of uh, epithelium is there that is a transitional epithelium wherein um, uh, it is composed of again uh, several layers of uh, tissues which is pear shaped cells are there in them and then um, they, uh, they have the capacity to divide themselves okay they reproduce themselves or divide themselves Usually these transitional epithelial tissues are present in the lining of the urinary tract, okay, and then the bladder, especially in the bladder these cells are found, okay. So this is the transitional epithelium, that is in again transitional epithelium you have a transitional epithelium with relaxed and stretched. In relaxed transitional epithelium you will have a round relaxed uh, cells wherein you get a more uh, uh, density of that and then your, the cells usually here will be cuboidal okay rounded or the cuboidal shaped cells are there and whereas in stretched they are squamous they are flattened here okay. So you all uh, in both the cases you will have two to nuclei, uh, nucleus or nuclei in them that is the transitional epithelium. 
Now coming to the other one that is the keratinized squamous epithelium. Keratinized means that they usually uh, uh, found in the I mean, dry surfaces usually they are found in. So the what happens is that the epithelial upper layer uh, tissue is dead there. So the dead epithelial cells are present in them. The most important thing here is that the placement membrane cells they produce the keratin that is the protein which is required. So usually the, the sites where this keratinized squamous epithelial tissue is present is skin, hair and nail where the they produce there will be a dead epithelial cells but they will have the protein called keratin in it. Okay, so this is the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. This is the example for that wherein the uh, on top of the cells they are dead cells are there. Okay, cells are dead but they will have the protein in them which is produced by the bottom cells here that protein is called as the keratin protein okay so uh, other than keratin non keratin epithelial tissues are also there which protects the moist surfaces of our body so which are subjected to the wear and tear and they prevent them from drying so they keep it moist so when they uh, come across a drying surface they protect them or give the uh, lubrication to them so the sites where the non keratinized epithelial tissues is present is conjunctiva of the eye and lining of the mouth and vagina so all these uh, areas they keep it moist okay this is so all about the epithelial tissue structure location and functions of epithelial tissue we have discussed so the reference books you can go for the tortora and then ross and wilson is also the best one and essentials of medical physiology in symbolism so thanks for watching